Hey, so before you watch this video, you should go over to the IJA's channel and watch my Tricks of the Month video that just came out because that's what this video is about, which is the behind the scenes, fails, unused tricks, things that didn't make it into the real video. So it just, it makes more sense to go watch that first, then watch this one. Otherwise, you just, it's not gonna be as good of an experience. So go see that one first. I'll wait. I mean, I'm not really gonna wait because it's the internet. So, all right, here we go. Well, that was dark. <laughs> right off the bat, I wanted to address, uh, I've had a few people reach out to me and ask me if I'm okay. Like if I'm just if I'm doing okay after that video, I appreciate it. Thank you. It's very sweet of you to be concerned about my mental health, understandably so, but uh, I'm fine. I really am. I mean, I've been pretty vocal on this channel in the past about how I do struggle with anxiety and depression. And that's just been a constant part of my life for a while. But it's not like it's particularly bad right now. It's just my life. But that video, I like to think of videos as sort of like performances and they are conveying something, a theme or a tone or an experience. And in this particular case, it was a video sort of about that darker side of life and juggling and whatever you take out of it. I don't want to delve too much into like the theme of it that I had going in because I kind of love that everyone seems to have their own interpretation of it. I've really enjoyed reading all the comments and how some people really relate to the emotions in it and some people were kind of off put by it. But I do want to be very clear, it's a video. It's a sort of performance as are most videos on the internet. So in that sense, it's sort of amplified and intentionally created 
to give across that very strong emotion. So if you came out of that wondering like, woo, Taylor's in a dark place, no darker than usual, this video is just supposed to sort of highlight that feeling of being in that dark place. Yeah. <laughs> I was particularly amused by the comment that said that I must really hate juggling because I didn't smile in the video. <laughs> I don't hate juggling for the record. I've been doing it for like 15 years. So if I hated it, I probably just wouldn't do it. So first off, thank you so much for watching my Tricks of the Month video. I worked really hard on it. I was super nervous to create it and to release it. It's just meant the world to me how many positive reactions it has gotten. Um, it, you guys are all so supportive. Thank you. And of course, thank you so much to all my patrons. I feel like I've sort of let you down the last couple months. I haven't forgotten about you. I haven't given up on this channel or anything like that. It's just there's a lot of projects that take longer than the typical tutorial. This Tricks of the Month video being one of them. This took a while to plan and film and edit and stuff. Hopefully I'll be wrapping up a bunch of those projects and I can get back to my normal posting of just awesome, fun tutorials for you. But I also think that you're gonna really like a lot of the projects that come out. I, they're, I think they're helpful for you. So this video, I just wanted to take you through a sort of behind the scenes look at making that Tricks of the Month video. You know, talk about the filming, the juggling, the editing, all the fun bits that go into making a longer form juggling video. And of course, that nice little compilation at the beginning. So those were a bunch of clips that I really liked but didn't make it into the final edit for some reason or another. Some of them just didn't fit. Some of them I didn't love the, the composition, like the image. A couple of them, my face looks a little weird and I didn't like that. Some of the tricks, you know, weren't clean enough, but I still liked them and I didn't want to see them just disappear forever. So thanks for watching that little compilation. So let's talk a little bit about planning this video because I had a lot of fun and anxiety with that. I have always wanted to do an IJA Tricks of the Month video. It's one of my favorite things that IJA does. I just, I love it so much, but I've honestly never felt like I was worthy because there's just some amazing jugglers in that series. And since the highlight is specifically supposed to be on the tricks, uh, I feel personally like that's an area where I actually struggle a lot. I tend to just sort of be like a jack of all trades juggler. So the idea of like highlighting tricks that I have gave me a lot of anxiety because I just, I don't feel like I have a lot of good ones. I mean, I have a lot of good ones, but just like unique ones that people haven't seen before. I don't, I'm not that kind of juggler. So yeah, I was nervous when the IJA approached me and asked me to be a part of this series. And for the last few months, I basically uh, panicked about it. Um, since it was so far in advance, I made like a huge list of tricks that I wanted to do that I thought would be impressive to everybody so that I wouldn't get picked on for being a part of the series just because I'm popular or something. So I made a huge list of hard tricks. So let's look at it. Yeah, I think there's like 40 tricks on here. And I wanna say that maybe three of them made it into the video. Turns out it's really hard to learn really hard tricks. But over the summer, I actually got really into a lot of mess variations, as you probably know if you saw my last video. The result of that was that a lot of the tricks that I was excited to share in my Tricks of the Month video were mess variations. I love mess variations, especially with four balls. So I was so excited to have gotten, you know, Burke's Barrage, Follow, uh, Fake Mess. You know, I think I do like Half Mess and Flows Mess with four balls. A lot of stuff that I've never really seen on video. I mean, it probably exists, but I've never seen it. So I was excited to share that. And that definitely gave me a little bit more confidence in this video. Those variations are definitely my favorite part of the video. I mean, it's like 80% of the video, so that makes sense. The six ball mills mess, very exciting. I wanted to get more catches on camera. I have done more catches than that, but because of the lighting, it was surprisingly hard to do. But I'm very happy that I at least got to qualify. I'm super proud of that, and I'll continue to work on it and get better at it, and hopefully I can get a longer run on camera. My last favorite trick that not one person has mentioned, ugh, no, I'm just kidding, is the four ball Ruben Scenes Revenge. That is such a hard pattern. 
probably why nobody has mentioned it is because it's not a very good run of it. It's super weird. You know, if you don't throw the ball at the exact right height, it just, it feels very clunky. And it looks clunky in this clip. You can tell that I'm struggling with the speed and the rhythm of it because I can't quite figure out those heights. And I have a few times, but I didn't get it on camera that time. Nevertheless, what a cool pattern. It's so cool. I'm gonna keep working on it. I love it. Okay. So yeah, after I had a basic idea of the tricks I wanted to film, next comes the more interesting part in my mind. The filming, the story, the theme, the tone, the oomph, you know, oomph. I like using juggling as a way to get a viewer to feel something, to think something. I think the same is true for performances, right? I mean, like performances are different in their own way, but to me, it's kind of strange that jugglers sort of expect you to only put like your best tricks on video, otherwise there's no reason to make a video. Uh, I think that's really sad. Cause to me, a juggling video is an expression. It's a performance. It, it's not just about the tricks. It's about the experience. So yeah, next step in the prop, prep, prep, prepping, the prepping process was figuring out how to convey that tone, expression, whatever. I actually had notes upon notes of different ways to actually make this video, you know, story elements, different shots, different locations. The more I thought about it, the more I really wanted the juggling and the emotion behind the juggling to sort of lead the video. So I ultimately decided on a pretty basic, straightforward location. But this one was really unique because I wanted to find a place that was interesting, but didn't have too much going on and wasn't too busy that it detracted from the focus of the juggling. So then I found this place, it's a big barn. It's actually really beautiful inside. Uh, I picked the most depressing corner that I could find, but the rest of it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place. So I showed up at like nine o'clock at night with a bunch of lights and equipment all by myself. I always film by myself. I don't like filming around other people because I get nervous and awkward. Such a nice location, big empty spooky barn in the middle of the night with a bunch of spiders and bugs. Buddy, you need to move. This is my light. I need it. Please don't be here anymore. Also, the roof kept making those cracking noises, you know, when heat changes. So that was, that was a little scary. There was a couple of times when I was filming and I would hear a noise like that and I'd just kind of panic because I didn't know what it was. I'm fairly certain there were no ghosts. There was a lot of bugs. A lot of big bugs. But yeah, great place. So when it came to actually filming the patterns, I, you know, I had roughly a lot of tricks that I wanted to cover, but something I really wanted to do in this video was have two styles of juggling. There are the more controlled tricks where I look kind of exhausted and almost like in a zombie-like trance. I wanted those mostly to be repetitive patterns, you know, very controlled, very precise. And in contrast to that are the spotlight shots where the juggling is very chaotic and specifically mostly improvised sequences. I wanted the patterns to feel like I was barely in control of them. I wanted there to be a lot of emotion and movement in those clips. And I wanted that to contrast with the controlled, very static pattern shots. That being said, those spotlight shots in the dark very hard to film. I was not prepared. It turns out when you just shine a really bright white light in your face and that's all you can see other than black, it makes it very hard to, to juggle, especially in an improvised chaotic way, turns out. It was so much harder than I thought it would be. I just kept dropping the most obvious catches that I've done a million times because all I could see was a bright light. I mean, it basically felt like I was juggling blind. It was just by feel. And I'm, I'm very thankful that I got as much of that as I did because it was hard. And to make things even harder, I was juggling up on a balcony. And every time I would drop, the ball would go rolling or often flying off of the balcony all the way down to the other, the floor. I'd have to go walk all the way around this creepy, spooky barn in the middle of the night by myself. It just kept happening. It was amusing at first, and, and then it became more and more frustrating. And I filmed for hours. I think I was there until 5 a.m. So by the end of it, I was, I was very tired. I was a little frustrated with the light and how hard it was to juggle. And the spiders did not respect my creative bubble, which I didn't appreciate. 
and the balls kept falling off the balcony. So yeah, by the end of the night, um, some of those sort of grumpier shots may have been a little more honest. One of the things that I kept seeing in the comments and in messages that I was getting about this video was how tired I looked and people were really concerned about like the bags under my eyes. And again, I appreciate it. Thank you. That's so sweet. But the funny thing about that is I, that was, that was definitely on purpose. I wore, um, bruised makeup under my eyes, uh, very subtle to try to create that haven't slept look. Do I look tired? This is just film makeup, you know, it's a bruise wheel. Uh, it, a little bit goes a long way and you basically just, you can put a little bit on there, rub it around like that. See, look, I got a bruise, ow, it hurts. I wanted it to be subtle and believable, but still create like a subconscious, oh, she looks tired. <laughs> so I'm glad that worked. Too much? And then I also let my hair get a little greasier than usual. Relax, it's not like I didn't shower for a week or anything like that. I just have very thin hair and it tends to get sort of weighed down and a little bit greasier at the end of the day. So typically before I film, I'll take a shower and it'll be nice and fluffy and pretty. But this one, I, I didn't do that. I waited till the end of the day and it was sort of weighed down. It was a little bit greasier and that's why it has a little more of that darkness. A lot of people kept asking me if I dyed my hair. No, I didn't. Part of it was just that it wasn't as freshly washed, but most of it honestly is the lighting. And then color correction, you know, also amplifies it and stuff. But no, I haven't dyed my hair and I have slept. Editing it was really fun. I got to learn a lot more about color correction. For example, this is what the shot looked like when it came out of the camera. And then this is the final shot. So that was fun for me to get better at that. And then adding those glitch effects on top of it, that was actually really new for me. I don't typically do a lot of obvious edit things like that. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of them. But for this one, I felt it was really appropriate because I really wanted it to feel like we're watching uh, this experience of this person on video for various reasons. I'll let you try to figure out why, but there was definitely an intention there of making it feel like a video that we're watching. So yeah, so that's it. Thanks for listening to me talk about my process of making that video. Thank you for watching it. If you didn't watch it, go watch it. What are you doing? Go, go watch it. It's good. And while you're over there, make sure you subscribe to the IJA's YouTube channel. It's just great. They're great. It's awesome. And of course, subscribe to me too, if you're not. Please. And yet, last thing, just thank you for all of the amazingly kind comments that I've gotten on this video. I, I was really, really anxious about releasing this. Partly because it's not on my channel and it's not fully my audience. And that's intimidating because people aren't as nice to you when they don't, you know, follow your stuff as much and they don't really know what you're doing. But also, it's a pretty personal video. You know, there's a lot of personal expression and emotion in there that's intimidating to put out there to the world. <laughs> you know, in the middle of editing, I almost uh, scrapped the whole thing. I almost told the IJ, you know, I'm sorry, I can't do it. In fact, I delivered it to them a few weeks late because of that reason. I was supposed to be in the October slot. I got really in my head about it and just almost, almost didn't release it. Again, thank you to all of you for just your continued support, caring so much about my mental health, following me, subscribing to me, being patrons, just all of the things, it means a lot to me. Thanks. Okay, so let's go edit this and then I'm almost done. I'm like 98% done on my next tutorial that should be out within a week of this one. I'm, I'm saying it now, look for it, be there or be square. I mean, you can't juggle squares, so. I mean, you probably could, but why? Like... All right, bye.